Getting there with Gaz, a business themed episode. Thrilled for this episode. One of my friends, one a great business person who is joining us to talk about his career and all the great things his business can do for you. And that is my pal Derek Allen over at Graftex. DA, we're doing this. Getting there with Gaz, man. Thank you for joining us. We're taping this a few hours after Selection Sunday, by the way. So thank you for carving out some time. You're a young dad like me. The baby's asleep. The brackets right. are out. But well, you're ready to join us to talk about everything going we're on. We're ready to go, here. man. We're ready to go. What I a, love what it, a, man. What a great weekend, great day, and uh, ending it off with uh, Selection Sunday. Uh, it's going to be going to be a good episode here for everybody. Yeah, we won't make you make any picks because the brackets are just out. We've got our March Madness breakdown bracket coming on the day after you so this is going to air wednesday it's going to come on thursday but let's get to you let's learn a little bit more about your background take us to a young Derek allen six seven years old what do you want to be as a kid it was at the same job you wanted when you end up turning 18 and where'd you grow up so i'm uh i'm from Cortland, new york born and raised lived here my whole life went to school here uh high school college live here now today great place to live says myself and uh, maybe three others in the world. <laughs> but uh, no, when I was when I was six or seven, I uh, I actually wanted to be a mailman, believe it or not. Yes. Really? Yes, I did. I wanted to be a mailman. I, I just idolized my mailman and uh, mailman, garbage man, whatever like that. I wanted to be one of those guys. Wow. Yes. yes. And you know what? Th- I think about it now. I put in 20 years, retire, and start something new. Maybe I should have been a mailman. <laughs> so what changed? Did you Was there a path that said, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore? By the time you were 18, where'd you end up going to college? And it was mailman still the pursuit at that point. Yeah, you know, I think the, I think the idea that people drill in your head, college, 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 it kind of turned me away from some of the jobs that were more like, you know, blue-collar, hard-working that kind of job. So uh, kind of put me in the direction of a, a sport management degree. And um, we'll get into that, I'm sure, a little bit later. But yeah, mailman. Mailman was first first on the list. <laughs> Behind professional basketball player, of course, you know. Of course. So many yeah. people wanted to be the athlete. So many people wanted to do that. So yeah, let, let's get into that sports management background. So uh, you start considering maybe you want to do something different in sports, whether that ends up being you know, because of you're not going to be a pro basketball player, baseball player, you still want to be a sports fan. You are a sports fan. That starts to be your passion or your pursuit when 15, 17, maybe senior year of high school. Yeah, I'd say 15, 16, 17. I wanted to be a, a division one college basketball coach. So right out, even even throughout college, that's what I that's what I wanted to be. Number one. Um so after mailman, I came into uh, Division One college basketball coach was my new my new career goal. So uh, throughout college, I, I tried out for the basketball team my freshman year, and uh, I got cut. You know, f- five nine, no hops, decent jump shot, a little bit turnover prone as a point guard. <laughs> Didn't quite cut it, but. It, it, it still uh, it still opened up my eyes to a lot of things because I found out that I really like to coach. And once I got caught, I got involved with coaching a, uh, a local AAU program. And uh, then it turned into uh, running the AAU program. And then it turned into a, a high school coaching job. And uh, no more D1 aspirations, but <laughs> we're here still coaching basketball. So, um Mailman, D1 coach, and uh, still coaching. Amazing. And I want to get to your coaching background in a little bit. But first, you got to make that decision. You got to go to school somewhere. What schools are you considering going to? And why do you eventually decide on the school that you did attend and for that major? Yeah. So um, going back to it, like I, I wanted to play basketball in college. You know, I really want to play basketball in college. And there was a few smaller Division three schools that um, I was getting, you know, recruited by. And, you know, you could have, I could have went there and probably played on the team. Who knows if I would have played a lot or whatever, but, you know, gotten the opportunity to play college basketball. Um, McDaniel College down in Maryland and Cuca College right here in upstate New York and um, eventually settled on SUNY Cortland. Um, because of the sport management program, number one, 
And of course, you know, being a, a teenager, there's always girls involved. So <laughs> always partially, <laughs> partially system with a girl, you know, so ended up at SUNY Cortland, keeping it local. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy with my decision. I loved it. I love SUNY Cortland. So I, I, I hate to even ask this. Was the girl that was being pursued, I guess, at that point, being courted your current wife or no? No, 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 <laughs> no, was not, was not. <laughs> okay, so you get to Cortland. You're pursuing what this might be, some type of sports future. What type That's of right. classes are you taking? What type of experience are you getting? Are you enjoying it? Are you nervous? Take us through these moments that maybe so many people listening are like you. They have this opportunity that they think they're going to have. They don't. They hit college. They want to do something. Take us through those first couple of years of the hands-on experience you're getting at Cortland. Cortica, 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 Cortica. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, so, uh, Cortica is a big part of it. We had we had a blast at SUNY Cortland. You know, don't don't get me wrong. We it was a uh, definitely one big party, but uh, we also learned a lot, um, a decent amount. So. Uh, First few classes, you know, was the the regular general ed classes. I was lucky enough to go into college with um, 43 college credits from high school. So that that cut off a whole year of my schooling, um, which was cool. Saved some money, kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> um, sure. Yeah, so that was nice. But uh, did did a ton of classes in uh, – Man, you're throwing me. That was like 10 years ago. I, I don't know what class. We were. <laughs> Did you have any internships at that point or like a job you had early on in your career? Like, I know the Jets were there at that point. Did you intern with the Jets or is that my other buddies from Salvi who did that? Oh, no, no. We we all interned together. We <laughs> we, we took trips down to uh, down to Meadowland Stadium and uh, pulled some 3 a.m. shifts where we were back in Corland at 3 a.m. and hitting class up the next day, believe it or not. See, that, that's amazing to think about that situation. When the New York Jets were having their training camp at SUNY Cortland, you guys are there doing your things. Did you have a situation? This might have been our pal, Bert. Were you involved with the Mark Sanchez situation, cleaning out his room and finding things? Do you have any idea of that story, what I'm talking about, or no? Uh, we, we found Jason Taylor's size 16 Nike shoes. <laughs> I'll never forget Jason Taylor's size 16 Nike shoes. Massive. <laughs> Yeah, like you're just – and by the way, like most people don't leave their shoes in a place and be like, I don't need those anymore. Like just that's the NFL mindset. I'll just leave stuff. Somebody will be happy with these if they have size. <laughs> it, it, wasn't, it wasn't just one pair either. There were multiple pair of shoes. I was going to say, like I got excited on the video side. You saw me like, oh, wow, awesome. No one has a size 16. Not like anybody's going to be like wearing them around or anything. No, no. Who's going to leave those, right? <laughs> so you end up doing some crazy things at Cortland both class wise experience wise and everything else but senior year eventually hits you got to get a real job you got to pursue something by the time and again you mentioned that you were ahead on your credits it might, is it your junior year or your senior year how many years do you actually do in college and what happens following the actual graduation yeah so i do three years in college and my junior senior year was kind of combined into one there and uh the capstone class for sport management at Cortland is kind of a, an internship so I did, I did an internship with the Jets for the year, and uh, they selected a few guys to go down to Meadowlands Stadium, and we did that, and then uh, that turned into eventually an internship with a minor league baseball team uh, down in Daytona Beach. So I, uh, I learned some life lessons down in Daytona Beach, Florida, for, uh, for six months of my life. Six months, man. That's a massive internship. Can you say you can say the name of the team at this point, right? Oh yeah, they they were the Daytona Cubs. The Daytona Cubs. So there yep. you are, young in your early twenties, headed down to Florida. You do have responsibilities, but not as many as let's just say other twenty year olds. And you're you're living the life, man. You're living the life everyone wants to. You're working in sports as yep. a college kid in beautiful weather, and I'm sure surrounded by beautiful women. Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely an adventure <laughs> and uh, <laughs> a lot of life lessons learned. So while you're there with the Daytona Cubs, do you feel like baseball is going to be it? Like you've done stuff with the NFL. You're now doing stuff with baseball. When you're having that much fun and getting that much experience, maybe you start to think, yeah, I know I want to be a coach. But when I get to live a life like this, maybe it's time to start pursuing this rather than what I thought. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, being down there in Florida, there was... Um, 
a lot of, like I said, a lot of life lessons learned and, you know, balancing the, the work life with the play life, you know, being in the sunshine all day and kind of in a party town. Um, it went, the, the internship, well, like went well for me. You know, I, I probably could have stayed there throughout the summer making no money at the time. No money. It was an unpaid internship. So um, weighing the finances and weighing everything going on, I, I kind of said, this isn't for me. Baseball, baseball this far away from home, not for me. Uh, there was a few other guys that I interned with that ended up with, you know, full time jobs with the club. Um, and I was probably right in line to do that. But once a few things happened and it was just so far away from home and I was like, time to get back to upstate New York, you know. Uh, and but what I learned down in Daytona was, you know, life really comes out you fast and you, you need to get your grips together in the real world or else, you know, you're going to miss out. You're going to, you're going to lose a lot of things that you possibly could have had. So that brought me back up to uh, Cortland, New York, where I was born and raised and, uh, and came an opportunity working at, uh, at Graftex. Yeah. So let's get into Graftex. Let's get into what happened, how you started. Take us to the interview. Was there someone you knew at the company were you interviewing cold calling? How did you get that first interview? It's so important for people who listen to this, especially in a world we're living in in March of 2021, where soon to be college graduates or even college graduates because of the economy are looking to just land an interview. How'd you do it and how did it go? Yeah. So the um, throughout my three years at Cortland State, we we I was coaching with a, an AU basketball program, the Cortland Basketball Club. And through the Cortland Basketball Club, I had a connection to the owner of Graftex. I coached his, uh, his kids um, on the basketball court. So when I came back into town, I had known about the company for a few years, you know, growing up, getting jerseys for, for my club basketball teams and everything. You know, I, we'd, we'd go down to Graftex and get stuff printed and, and all that. And uh, one of your buddies, actually, Will Connery. My man, shout out to yeah. Will Connery, the pride yeah. of Homer High School. And That's Hobart, right. of course. Yeah, former statesman like yourself. Yeah. Uh, for, not newly married here too. He just got married a little while ago. Nice. Yep. So congrats to that. Um, but yeah, he was working in the store at the time, and he's like, "Hey, our, our store manager just quit. You know, we we we're looking for a store manager." So, with a sport management degree and coming back into town, I was working currently at UPS from. 3 a.m. to 8 a.m., you know, just kind of right back in town looking for a job, got UPS. And I was also doing um, some night shifts at a hotel, working at a hotel overnight, too. So um, kind of putting ends together, living at home, that kind of deal. And and just this popped up, you know, and so I called up, filled out an application and I had known the the owners of the company. And uh, they're like, yeah, hey, we'd love to have you come down. They're asking me about my experience and they're like, yeah, I think this could be a good fit for you. We'll we'll start it off with a trial thing for three months and see where it goes. So uh, I got the go ahead and they gave me the keys to the store, believe it or not. <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. The keys of the store. Like I heard you say the term manager, but you have no experience as a sales rep. You have no experience as someone who's on like the associate floor, we'll call it. You walk off the street from recent college graduate to managing the entire store that's doing business there in Cortland? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, the, so Graftex is, Graftex is split into a few different things, but the retail store is one of our things. You know, I, I'd known, I knew a lot of the, a lot of the youth in, in the area. So um, yeah, right into a manager role, me hiring people, firing people, everything just like that. All right. <laughs> so let's, that's, yeah. inc- that's insane to me. And by the way, for those who see this on the visual side, if you're listening on the audio side, uh, Graftex is just not strictly Cortland. Like if you want, if you're listening to the Capital Region, you want to order custom apparel for your team. If you want to work with Graftex, they all ship out to the Capital Region in Syracuse and everything else. Check them out online, graft-tex.com. Again, graft-tex.com. Call them 1-800-417-7791 or email our guy, Derek, we're talking to right now, D Allen D-A-L-L-E-N, at graph-text.com. So you're hiring, you're firing, you're being a manager. What are some of the 
mistakes you may make? I know it's hard to answer some of these questions because you're still working there, but was there a moment in that first six months or a year you're like, okay, I'm learning as a manager too. This is my first time doing this. I should not do stuff like this. Uh, yeah, I'd say there's definitely a few of those learning experiences, you know, like learning how to manage, manage the people that are working for you while not making them angry. You know, you want to really make them too angry, but you want to show that being a young guy who's only two or three years older than some of these kids that are working for you, you know, um, you want to show them that number one, you're the boss, not really their friend. Um, you don't want to blur any lines like that. Um, so that was probably one of the biggest challenges coming in, you know, so being only a few years older, uh, but also, you know, keeping them, keeping them close and keeping them happy and making sure everybody gets the right hours that they're looking for. Um, dealing with customers was always one of my favorite parts. You know, uh, I think that, I think that the, uh, the customer side of it and making sure you're seeing a customer leave your store and coming back and coming back again and again and having a repeat customer really shows like what we're all about, you know, customer service is number one. So um, we really, we were really trying to make sure everybody knew that. And that was the first thing that I told anybody that I hired is that we want people to come back. We don't get a lot of foot traffic in the store. So Graftex, we have a retail store. We have a online marketplace that sells mainly all lacrosse stuff. So our retail store and our, and our online like retail website is completely a little bit different than our screen print embroidery section. So right now I'm a, I'm a baseball basketball guy selling lacrosse stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I really had to learn on the fly there, but I, yeah, I, like, I'm not starting to catch up, but like the, the amazing part about this, I think we all offer a little perspective here for some people who don't have the background too. that, you know, when you're talking about staff people, you're talking about both people who are working at customers who are walking in and I'm sure you're working with actual sales reps, account executives who are dealing with these accounts who are teams, you know, local businesses, somebody who wants a kickball jersey or a slow pitch softball jersey, you're dealing with all different things. Like you said, you have to walk in traffic of people who might just walk in, see your store, want to order something and you're good to go. The cool part about your business, and maybe you can offer a little bit more on this, is that when you give someone a good product, a cool jersey, a cool shirt, you can see their reaction. So many other yeah. sales positions you have to wait and it's termed as an investment and it but you get to see it. Like if you were doing it, well, I swear, like if you're doing a shitty job, someone would tell you and you'd see it. You get to see how good this stuff is for people who work with Graph Techs because you see the reaction from people. Yeah, you 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 know right away. And and luckily for us, you know, we we have many people walk out our doors with smiles and and come back to us year after year, season after season, with you know with orders that hey, last time you guys did this and it turned out great. You know, can you do this this time? Um, you know, we have a handful of times where something doesn't go right, but the good thing that we do is we make sure at the end of the day, the customer's happy, you know? So if you're not happy with your final product, we're going to make sure you get what's right. So yeah, that's and the, one for us. Yeah. And the cool part about this too, I think that if you are somebody who works a nine to five people in your industry and people at Graph Techs, they kind of don't work in nine to five. If a team has a practice at seven 30 and the coach wants to meet at eight, you're meeting at eight. If you know, the store obviously has hours that you work in, but sales rep and people who do this, your email is always open. Your communications always open. Cell, and phone you guys are, open. cell phone, right? Like you guys communicate with the customers. There are certain businesses, the doors just close and it's over. That's not how the apparel business works. No, it's, it's, it's kind of almost like a 24, seven, seven, always getting a hold of you there. Sundays, Saturdays, doesn't really matter. My wife doesn't love that part of it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, man, the cool part about what happens with you and what makes you so unique in this industry and what makes Graph Techs and working with them so much fun is that it's not just, okay, uh, we're doing apparel and that's it. They have people like you, and this is one of the reasons I loved having you on for this episode. You are still coaching. You yeah. are watching what athletes want to wear, want to find cool, want to brag about with your friends. Take us inside of the coaching you're still doing now and the reaction you're seeing and how maybe, like you mentioned, we're 10 years out of college now. What kids are into now that maybe you and I weren't into 10 years ago when it comes to the apparel side? Well, number one are joggers. Yeah. Joggers, joggers weren't cool when you and I were in college. No. 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 Not at all. 
Now they're all the rage. They can't keep them in stock. Nobody can keep them in stock. Under Armour, Nike, nobody. So, so if you need joggers, I might be able to find some for you, but it's not going to be Under Armour or Nike. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, coaching right now. I'm a, I'm the head varsity basketball coach at McGraw High School, uh, and we've been fortunate enough to have a few successful years. Uh, and when I put together, you know, player packages for my guys, I can see how excited they are to get sweatsuit. You get a, a sweatshirt, sweatpant, practice short, practice jersey, shooting shirt, and we're able to put together packages like that for any different team. You know, not only not only my team, but your team too. Anybody that wants a package, we can put something together for you. So, and and we have different price ranges. You know. 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 70 bucks, whatever you want to spend, we'll be able to put something together for you. Well, I've hosted long enough when I can notice a segue and I feel like you just set me up so well. And I like acknowledging the segues. Like some people are like, wouldn't you do it? I see what you did there. So thank you because (laughs) there are some people listening to this that don't know exactly what's going on. So this is the part we're getting to. Thank you to you, Derek, in Graftex. We are proud to announce. I used to do a drum roll at a former business. I used to. I won't even do it. But thanks to Graftex, we have something very exciting to share now. You can see it on our visual side. Today, look, I had to take a deep breath because it's a big deal for me. We are officially launching Godzilla Media. So some of you may have picked up the big clue that was left on one of our earlier podcasts with our pal Josh Murray. Godzilla Media has now officially launched. If you are a podcast host, if you're a young media member, if you're a business owner, if you want to expand your brand in any way, Derek's on with us. We've had former business people on with us as well. If you want to be a guest, you can contact us. If you want to find out about how to launch your own podcast, again, YouTube, right? We want to offer this outlet at Godzilla Media. There are so many talented people out there that want just an opportunity, want to show off what they can do. We're doing that at Godzilla Media. And the exciting part is we've got some merch. Everybody Thanks. loves merch. Everybody That's loves merch. right, man. Thanks to you guys over at Graftex. We've got some merch to share. And again, we're sharing this on our social media side as well. There it is, man. I want to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. We got t-shirts, hoodies, long sleeves, hats, and this is very important. I'm probably going to repeat this for the next two weeks. This was something you and I did very uh, consciously when we set these prices. You work in apparel. I've worked in apparel my first job out of college as well. We did not want to jack up these prices like we see with other podcasts and media companies where you see a 100% cotton t-shirt for 30 bucks. We are not doing that. Derek, kind of explain a little bit the strategy behind how we set these prices for people so we are not breaking the bank for what we're doing. Yeah, so all these logos that we have here are are one color prints. Um, They are very, very well done by our art department and uh, Gaz's artist. uh, And they- Shout out to Matt Davis. Matt Davis, don't go squatch on Instagram. Shout out to him. He's done a great job with this. Matt is really, really helped out with this. Make sure to give him the follow and the love on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It was very good artwork that we got sent to us. And I, and I love the wrestling theme that we have going on here with the, with the <laughs> little, I don't know if we can say it, but the G-O-Z. No. The it the looks G-O-Z like something. We yeah, we won't, we won't go too far into it. No. Maybe uh, we'll just say it looks like something. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like something. There for, we for love purposes. it. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we're, we're about, we're about putting, putting, uh, t-shirts at the right price for people. Uh, we don't, we don't jack our prices up a ton. Um, everybody's out to make a dollar here and there, but we, we make sure that price is right for people. So, uh, this web store is priced right. You know, guys is doing a good thing here by getting, getting a logo out for all you guys to wear and re- represent for Godzilla media. And, uh, I see big things coming from this. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And there's one thing, especially too, with this gear, I want to point out. And I had this conversation with you. If you're again, watching on our visual side, if you're listening on audio side, go to GodzillaMedia.com. You can just click on merch. You'll see all the stuff. Again, we're not jacking up the prices. This is the exact price you'd basically see at Graftex or any other store you'd go to. All those things. Uh, the shirt on the third over. So three over on the visual side and four over on the second row. Those tri blends are the ones I personally would recommend you go and get. Because if you listen to the podcast when you're working out on the treadmill, 
soon enough, we're gonna have to start mowing our lawns again. You're gonna have to go back to the gym again. If you want like a workout weekend shirt that lasts you a long time, that is the shirt to go for. $18 we set that at. So if you buy one or two, you're getting those for under 40 bucks. And I'm telling you, I told, and Derek will tell you this as well. I told Derek, please, whatever we do, give me those tri-blends. I know what I want. I know what people are going to want when it comes to working out and having a shirt that lasts them a long time. Am, am I crazy with my tri-blend recommendation? Like if I was buying, that's what I'm going with because that's when people listen to podcasts and athletes and people want to work out in. Yeah. So we've got tri-blends. We've got 100% polyester, which is the real, real lightweight stuff. Uh, the tri-blends, a little more of a concert style, you know, lightweight, soft style t-shirt. Um, but the... Uh, they're, 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 they're all great pieces there for him. So, yes, very good stuff there. Appreciate all the great stuff Graftex is doing with us. Proud sponsor of Godzilla Media. Happy to have you guys on board. So, this store, by the way, again, GodzillaMedia.com, that store is going to be open till about, I think I'm going to make it last to like this, the day after the NCAA tournament. So, maybe like April 6th, Derek. I haven't even talked to you about the dates. I hope I can keep it open till April 6th. We'll see if we can or we can't, but that is my goal if we can keep it open that long. We'll make it happen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. I got a few more questions before I let you go. Uh, I know you're busy. I know you got a big day coming up tomorrow, as you always do, especially with all these spring sports coming back and everything else. Usually I'd have some fun graphics that close this with some fun questions. I like how the thing's set up, so I'm not going to put the graphics up because I like your logos right there. It looks good. Uh, it looks good. Thanks, so are yours. Yeah. So you're, thank you. So you're in a management position. When you are hiring an employee, Maybe someone is actually listening to this and wants to work with you. They want to work at Graftex. They want to do apparel. They want to do this. What do you look for when you want a future employee to work with your staff? Well, the number one thing that we work look for is um, work ethic. We want somebody that's going to be able to show up, you know, be there on time, be there ready to go. Um, if you're working in like a sales position or an artist position, uh, they've got to have a college degree. Okay, so college degree work ethic, um, somebody that's just, you know, ready to be a team player. You know, you come into graph techs every single day and we're one big team. You know, we sell to teams, but we're a team ourselves. And we, we really, really, really have a great relationship amongst everybody in the office. Um, and I think that somebody that fits in and gels right in with that, that that's what you like to see. So somebody that can get along with a bunch of people, you know, have some fun, uh, that's what that's what we look for. Work hard too. So, what's the biggest misconception about the apparel business? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I've I've you... got I've got one. I sorry to cut you off. I, mean, I feel like I've answered my own question. I always felt like it was turnaround time that people walk into the store and think you're gonna have the jersey tomorrow. Yes, that that's number one. Uh, number two, they think that we can magically come up with items that there aren't there. <laughs> Like if Nike doesn't have it, I can't get you this Nike piece. Like it just doesn't happen. <laughs> and, and this year, this year due to the pandemic, there's been major, major inventory issues um, with some of the name brands. And that's just something that we've had to work around. And we've done a very good job of doing that. Um, and hopefully things turn around here soon. Um, but we, we, we unfortunately can't stitch a Nike Nike logo or Under Armour logo on anything and say, yep, here we go. We're ready to go with this Under Armour item. So that's not something that works. But turnaround time, that's a good thing about Graftex is uh, if you need T-shirts in two to three days for an event, we can squeeze you in. We can make it happen. Whoa. Yep. Yep. Hey, graphtex.com, graph-tex.com. I didn't even know you guys could do that. That's very yeah. impressive. Yeah, I mean, quantity helps out. Quantity, uh, how complicated your design is. Um, but if, if you need some t-shirts for an event in two to three days, we can make it happen. Uh, I don't want to make you seem like a fashionista, but if Derek Allen got to pick an outfit and said, okay, this is my shirt, this is my hoodie, these are my pants, these are my sneakers, take us through like a comfortable, perfect if you could go through the Graftex gear, stuff that you personally would wear, not your best products, but hey, I love wearing this, this, and this for this reason. All right. Number one, Under Armour Qualifier Fleece Anorak Jacket. Quarter zip fleece. Um, it's got a hood. Extremely comfortable. 100% uh, polyester on the outside. Fleece on the inside to keep you warm. 
So that's what I'm wearing on top. Close number two is a Carhartt uh, Rain Defender. We also deal with Carhartt. So for any of the people, anybody that likes workwear out there, Carhartt is huge right now. So we're able to get Carhartt for you. Put your logo on it. Um, you guys got a landscaping company, construction company, um, roofing company, anything like that. Carhartt's the way to go, and we can get that for you. So close number two would be the Carhartt top. Um, shorts, my favorite short right now is, without a doubt, the Under Armour um, two-pocket locker woven short. So it's like a it's like a lightweight, kind of like a swimsuit material um, with no liner, obviously, but it's the uh, it's like the swimsuit material, and it's it's extremely comfortable. And you got to have pockets. Uh, shorts aren't shorts without pockets. That's another thing I've learned in this industry. <laughs> got to have pockets. Um, and then for my feet, my footwear, I am one hundred percent a New Balance guy. Love oh. the New Balance shoes. So uh, the New Balance Fresh Foams A eighties. Uh, we also deal with footwear, uh, running footwear, team basketball shoes. Team cleats, team footwear for your lacrosse team, baseball program. Um, New Balance has been ahead of a lot of different, you know, footwear companies that we deal with. But New Balance offers a great baseball cleat, baseball turf, uh, an awesome lacrosse cleat, lacrosse turf, as well as the best running shoes that uh, that you can get on the market. So shout out for New Balance right there. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine somebody right now at the gym or on the treadmill saying, I, I hate these sneakers. Just before you pause it, D Allen at graph text.com. D Allen, A L L E N at graph text.com and say, Hey, Derek, whatever you were just telling guys in that podcast, I want that. Just send yeah. them that email. Just send them that. Leave your phone number, leave that, and then get your new sneakers, your shorts, everything else. Simple as what did you say on the guys podcast? I want that. I want it in white and I want size nine. All right. There you go. We got you. <laughs> And I'll let you go on this, man. Getting there with Goss. We're always trying to help people find the next career path or a new career path they never thought about. Give us the best advice on how to get where you are, to get where Derek Allen is now at Graftex. Well, number one is it doesn't happen overnight. I see a lot of young kids these days that expect something to happen, you know, overnight. You know, like, yeah, I became a manager right out of college and that's one thing, but that was a store manager. So when you become a sales manager for the company, you're moving up through. So I was a store manager and then I eventually turned into the sales manager, um, controlling a bunch of the uh, account reps. Um, and it doesn't happen overnight. So I was in the store for eight years, you know, running the store for eight years, doing sales, growing my client list and growing my accounts, um, getting to know a bunch of people in the community and learning my product and learning the right pricing and everything. And, uh, over the last two years, I've been able to uh, get promoted to uh, sales manager, and it's just been an awesome, awesome change moving out of the store into the warehouse, into sales full time. Um, and uh, I'm ready to help you guys out any way you can. We are so excited here for the month of March and going forward to partner with you guys to share more stories about what you can do wherever your orders are coming from. I see our numbers, whether it's Albany, whether it's Syracuse, Utica, we're getting a lot of listeners. Shout out to everybody in Boston who listens. Our Boston numbers are up. Derek will take your orders. Graftex will take care of you. And as we touched on, the prices are amazing. The turnaround time is even quicker than I thought. So happy to have you and Graftex rolling with Godzilla Media and getting there with Gaz. Derek, go get some sleep. Get ready for the tournament. You and I will be texting. I cannot wait till we get together again, my friend. Go Orange. I'm sure you and I will be tailgating yes. again very soon. Tell everybody in your family we said hello. And uh, looking forward to working with all these great things to come with you in the near future. Guys, thanks for having me on. It's been a pleasure. And uh, everybody, go out and get your Godzilla Media gear at graph-text.com. <laughs>